Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel all about electronics. So in the last video we had seen everything about the passive RC low pass filter. So in this video we will learn about the RC high pass filter. So as its name suggests, this high pass filter passes the high frequency component from the input signal and attenuates or rejects the low frequency components. And if we see the frequency response of an ideal high pass filter, it will look like this. So this high pass filter passes all the high frequency components which is greater than this cutoff frequency Fc and it rejects all the frequencies which is less than this cutoff frequency Fc. So now in the last video we had seen that by connecting resistor and capacitor in this fashion we can design the low pass filter. So now just by interchanging the position of this capacitor and the resistor we can convert this low pass filter into the high pass filter. So in this high pass filter we are applying an input signal at this end and we are taking the output across this resistor. So now let us understand how this circuit acts as a high pass filter. So just by applying the voltage divider we can write V out as R divided by R plus Xc into V in where Xc is nothing but the reactance of this capacitor and we know that this reactance Xc can be given by equation 1 divided by omega c. So now let us consider the two extreme cases. Let us say at omega is equal to 0, the reactance of this capacitor will be infinity and because of that V out will be equal to 0 and at omega is equal to infinity, the value of this reactance will be 0 and hence this V out will be equal to V in. So as you can see at low frequency the output will be approximately equal to 0 and as the frequency increases the output will also increase and at high frequencies the output will be approximately equal to the input value. So now earlier we had seen the frequency response of an ideal high pass filter but if we see the frequency response of actual high pass filter it will look like this. So at low frequencies the output will be approximately equal to 0 and as the frequency increases the output will also increase and at cutoff frequency the output will be 0 0.707 or 1 by root 2 times the input value and as we go beyond this cutoff frequency the output will approximately equal to the input value. So below this cutoff frequency Fc the output will increase at the rate of 20 dB per decade. So now this cutoff frequency Fc can be given by equation Fc that is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi into Rc which is the same equation that we got for the low pass filter. So now let's derive this equation for the high pass filter. So again we can write this V out as R divided by R plus Xc into V in or we can say that V out by V in that is equal to R divided by R plus Xc. So now we can write V out by V in that is equal to R divided by under root R square plus Xc square and at cutoff frequency the output will be 1 over root 2 times the input signal. So by putting this value and squaring up at both the sides we can write 1 by 2 that is equal to r square divided by r square plus x square and if we further simplify it then we will get r square that is equal to x square and we know that x is nothing but 1 divided by omega c. So we can write this x square as 1 divided by omega square into c square and if we further simplify it then we will get omega square that is equal to r square into c square and hence omega is equal to 1 divided by rc and if we write this equation in terms of the frequency then the cutoff frequency equation will be 1 divided by 2 pi into rc. So in this way we have derived the expression for the cutoff frequency for the high pass filter. So now this high pass filter not only attenuates these low frequency components but it will also change their phase. And the phase of the output signal for the high pass filter can be given by the equation 10 inverse 1 divided by omega into CR. 
so now if you are wondering how we have arrived to this equation so let's derive this equation so let's once again write v out r d r by r plus x e into v in or we can say that v out by v in that is equal to r d r by r plus x e so now let's put the value of x e into this equation so we will get r d r by r plus 1 d r by j into omega c and if we further simplify it then we can write it as 1 d r by 1 minus j d r by omega into cr so now this v out by v in is known as the transfer function of this high pass filter and the phase of this transfer function can be given as minus tan inverse of minus 1 d r by omega into cr that is equal to tan inverse of 1 d r by omega into cr now if you see at omega is equal to 0 the 1 over omega cr will be infinity and hence the value of phase will be 90 degree so at omega is equal to 0 the output signal will leads the input by a 90 degree so now at omega is equal to omega c this term will be equal to 1 as omega will be equal to 1 over rc and hence the value of phase will be 45 degree and at omega is equal to infinity this 1 over omega cr will be equal to 0 and hence phase will be equal to 0 degree so we can say that at omega is equal to infinity the output signal will be in phase input signal so now if you see the phase versus frequency curve for the high pass filter it will look like this so at zero frequency the phase of the output signal will be 90 degree that means the output signal will lead the input by a 90 degree and at cutoff frequency if you see the phase of the output signal will be 45 degree that means output will lead the input by a 45 degree and as we move towards the higher frequencies the output signal phase will be approximately equal to the input signal phase and at infinity the phase of the output signal will be zero so now as we know about the phase and frequency response of this high pass filter now let us take one example based on this high pass filter so now in this example we have been asked to design the high pass filter which is having a cutoff frequency of 10 kilohertz so now we need to select the value of this capacitor and resistor in a such a way that we will get a cutoff frequency of 10 kilohertz so what we will do we will arbitrarily choose the value of resistance r as a 10 kilo ohm and we will decide the value of capacitor so now you may ask that why i had chosen the value of resistance r as a 10 kilo ohm the reason is that if i connect this high pass filter to the any other circuit then the next stage should not be get loaded by the value of this resistance r so now if i choose the value of resistance r in ohms then it is quite possible that my next stage might be get loaded and if i choose the value of resistance r in mega ohms then the value of capacitor will be very small and it will be so small that the parasitic capacitance will also come into the picture and because of that the design of this high pass filter will be get complicated so the value of r should be in the range of 1 to 10 kilo ohm so that is why i had chosen the value of r as a 10 kilo ohm all right so now the cutoff frequency fc can be given as 1 dr by 2 pi into rc so we can say that the capacitance c will be 1 dr by 2 pi into r into f and if we put the value of this resistance and frequency and if we find the value of capacitance then we will get the value of c as 1.59 nanofaraday now 1.5 nanofaraday is the readily available capacitor in the market and it is also very nearby to this value of 1.59 nanofaraday so we will take the value of capacitance c as a 1.5 nanofaraday and earlier we had assumed the value of this resistance r as a 10 kilo ohm so now if we put these two values of r and c into this cutoff frequency equation then we will find the cutoff frequency fcs 10.61 kilohertz which is slightly greater than our required cutoff frequency so now what we can do we will keep the value of this capacitance c as it is and instead of this 10 kilo ohm resistance we will use the 20 kilo ohm pot so just by adjusting this pot we will get a exit value of a 
10 kilohertz. So in our design, the value of capacitance should be 1.5 nanofarad. And instead of using the fixed value of resistor, we will use a 20 kilo ohm potentiometer. And by adjusting the value of this potentiometer, we can get a exit value of this cutoff frequency of 10 kilohertz. So in this way, we can design the high pass filter of a, any given cutoff frequency. So now if we see the frequency response of this high pass filter, it will look like this and our cutoff frequency for this filter is 10 kilohertz. So now let us assume that to this high pass filter, we have applied a 10 volt of sinusoidal signal with a variable frequency. So at very high frequencies, the output will be approximately equal to input and at the output we will get a 10 volt. At cutoff frequency of 10 kilohertz, the output will be 0 0.707 times the input value. So at the output we will get 7.07 .07 volt. And if we go one decade away from this 10 kilohertz frequency, then let's say at 1 kilohertz, the output will be one tenth of this value that is 0 0.707 .07 volt. So now suppose in your design, if you want that at 1 kilohertz, your output should be even much smaller than this 700 millivolt, then you should go for the higher order filters because for the first order filter, if you see the roll off is 20 dB per decade. And as we go for the higher order filters, the roll off will sharply increase. And if you see the output at one kilohertz, it will drastically reduce for the higher order filters. So just by cascading this first order high pass filters, we can design the higher order high pass filters. So let us take the case of a second order high pass filter. So just by cascading these two high pass filters, we can design the second order high pass filter. And the cutoff frequency of the second order high pass filter can be given by the equation 1 divided by 2 pi into under root R1 C1 into R2 into C2. And if R1 is equal to R2 and C1 is equal to C2, the cutoff frequency will be 1 divided by 2 pi into R1 into C1. Now designing this higher order filter is not as simple as it looks like because the next stage might get loaded by the previous stage and to eliminate this loading effect, we should isolate the two stages and we can do so by using the electrical buffer or we can go for the active high pass filter and we will learn more about this active high pass filter in the upcoming videos. So I hope in this video you understood about the passive RC high pass filter. So if you have any question or suggestion, please let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.